Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Redeemer Croydon's online prayer meeting. I'm Dustin. We do this prayer meeting every Friday at noon. Today is a little bit different because it's Good Friday. This is the day in history where Jesus died on the cross. And so throughout the centuries, Christians have set aside time to pause, to reflect, to remember who Jesus is and what he's done for us. So that's what we're going to do today. First, we're going to hear a short talk from Will. Uh, he's going to lead us through thinking about the cross and what it means for us. After his talk, we will spend a few minutes praying together, thinking about what we've learned from the scriptures, and then thinking about Jesus's death and what it means for us, and we'll be praying together. So now I'm going to turn it over to Will. Welcome. It's great to have you with us on this Good Friday, the day we remember Jesus' death. And the cross, of course, is at the very heart of Christianity. It's the centerpiece of our faith. Now, we'll be thinking about the resurrection in two days on Easter Sunday, but today is about the cross. And so I'm going to recount briefly now what happened when Jesus was crucified. And then we'll finish by thinking about what that means for us, how that speaks into our lives right now. And afterwards, that will then lead into a time of prayer. But when Jesus died, it must be said his physical suffering was nothing compared to his spiritual suffering. His physical suffering, unimaginable though it is to us, isn't the point in Jesus' death, which is why the Bible doesn't morbidly dwell on it. And so we're not going to either. But just so that we at least have a rough idea, a rough outline, crucifixion was an appalling death. It was reserved only for the lowest and worst of the criminals. It was invented by the ancient Persians, really perfected uh, some centuries later by the Romans. And it was very sophisticated and designed to inflict maximum pain for the maximum length of time before the victim eventually died. Uh, victims would be crucified naked. Uh, in the rare cases that women were crucified, they were crucified naked but facing the cross. And by the time the victim died, there would typically be a pool at the foot of their cross of their blood and their vomit and their feces and their urine and their sweat. So all dignity gone. It was a, a humiliating death. Uh, five to seven inch metal spikes would be driven through their wrists and feet. They'd be hoisted up on the cross and they would ultimately die from slow asphyxiation. They'd need to be pushing up with their legs and uh, their arms to open their chest cavity to be able to breathe. And as the hours and in some cases even days went by, they'd gradually lose the strength to do that. And so they would suffocate. Which is why if their death needed to be speeded up for any practical reason, like it was with the victims the either, either side of Jesus when he was crucified, a simple standard solution was simply to break their legs with a big club. But like I say, the real suffering for Jesus was actually none of that, and, and we could have gone much more deeply into other aspects of that physical suffering if we were going to be morbid. The real suffering for Jesus was none of that, it was spiritual. Because for those six hours on the cross, Jesus from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., the Bible explains that Jesus was experiencing hell itself, the terrifying, burning, righteous fury of his own Holy Father for all of the sins ever committed throughout all of human history by all of the people who would ever come to God for forgiveness and be saved. Now, we might think that sounds awful, but however bad that was, it was only for six hours. So not the end of the world. It wasn't the eternal hell that will be experienced by all those who die apart from Christ. But it's not quite that simple because God is infinitely holy and therefore sin is infinitely serious. And so God's judgment for it must be infinitely great. He's a fair judge. And because Jesus was fully divine as well as fully human, Jesus had infinite capacity to absorb and experience and take God's infinite judgment for the infinite sins of all the people who would ever later uh, get saved. So in that six hours, Jesus was actually experiencing all of the eternities in hell that all of the people who would ever be saved throughout history would have suffered for their own sin. And yet they call the day Jesus was crucified Good Friday. And the reason for that is that amazingly, all of that suffering is an indicator, not just of his commitment to displaying God's qualities and to his, his father's glory, though it is first and foremost, it's also an indicator of his love for us. Galatians 2.20 says, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me.
Which brings us to the first, just a handful of bullet points now on what the cross means for us, what Jesus' sacrifice does for us. And the first thing is that the cross is what the Bible calls our propitiation. In other words, it's the satisfying, the quenching of God's righteous anger for our sin. Now, it's not fair for someone to be angry about the same offence against them twice. And God's justified but awful anger for our offence against him already fell. It's already happened once. So it's not going to fall again. Jesus had it fall on him. So we're safe. God's wrath against us has been propitiated. A second, the cross is what the Bible calls our justification. In other words, it's the official declaration in God's law court, as it were, that we are officially not guilty. We're justified. Jesus took our place. We've been acquitted. A third, the Bible, uh, the, the cross is what the Bible calls our redemption. In other words, it's the means by which we've been redeemed, set free, released. A bit like you might redeem something precious and valuable by using a voucher. So Jesus redeemed us by using not just a voucher, but his own blood. And according to the Bible, Jesus redeemed us from, he set us free from our sin and from our guilt for our sin and for God's punishment for our sin and from the power of Satan. We were captive to those enemies and Jesus ransomed us. We're free. And fourth, the cross is our adoption. In other words, it's the means by which God, having propitiated his wrath against us, justified us, had his son redeem us, is then able to scoop us up and take us home. It's like we were orphans in the universe, vulnerable, clueless, helplessly heading for a grisly tragedy. And the first three things we've just seen are like God satisfying all the requirements needed for him to be able to adopt us into his family. And this fourth thing is then him actually adopting us. So the cross means we're out of the orphanage, we're out of the care home, we're out of the plastic bag left on the hospital steps, we're home with our forever father, safely. And those last four things now combine to make up what the Bible calls the atonement, the way God overcomes the barriers between him and us because of our sin and draws us to himself. And the atonement is the central and the main and the most important thing about the cross. And yet, like a beautiful priceless diamond, the cross is multifaceted and it achieves many other things for us as well. And so as I finish, here are just three other of the aspects of the cross that we can glory in. It's our victory. The Bible explains how the cross is the place where God triumphed over our enemy, the devil and his demons. You see that the leverage that Satan and evil spirits have on us is because of our sin. Take that away, their power over us is gone. They're defeated, we have victory. A sixth, the cross is our revelation. Often in the Bible, we, we see the cross revealing different things about God to us. His mercy, or his love, or his wisdom, or his righteousness, or his justice, or any number of other things about him too. And many in this world spend their lives speculating about what God might be like and tragically wasting their lives because they never get to meet him. They never get to have an answer to their question. They never get to know him. So how can we know what he's like? Answer look at the cross. Which brings us to the final example I'll cover for now, which is that the cross is also our example. And Jesus presents the cross as the kind of way we are to be loving each other as his people. In other words, within Redeemer, especially during a, a time like this, in, in this surreal virus season where love is an absolute premium, we're to be loving each other sacrificially. That's what the cross meant for Jesus. If we're only caring for each other in ways that don't really affect us that much, we're not really caring for each other, not properly. And we're to love each other practically. Now, Jesus didn't just stay up in heaven thinking nice thoughts of us. He got up off his throne, came down and got on the cross. So in our love for each other, we do things for each other. Uh, when there were no eggs in the shops a few days ago, uh, one of you used your daily exercise to walk a couple of miles to our home and give us some eggs. Now that is love. And as well as the cross being our example of love being sacrificial and our love for each other being practical, it also shows how our love for each other is to be radical. Jesus went to hell for us. So no far is too far for what we do for each other. So there are seven aspects of the cross for us to meditate on on this Good Friday and praise God for, and be comforted by, and be challenged by, and to pray through. 
Thanks, Will. So now we've heard seven things about what the cross means for us. Over the next few minutes, we're going to be now praying together. Uh, we'll pray in two different sections. This first section, we're going to be praying in response to what we've heard from God's word. So there were seven things that Will pointed out to us about what the cross means for us. I want you to pick just one, one that was important to you or, or one that, may, that maybe stuck out to you for some reason. We're going to spend a little bit of time uh, just quietly. There'll be a little bit of music playing. Uh, I want us to silently be thinking about that truth. We'll be praying about it. And at the end of that time, uh, I'll close us in prayer. So let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your plan to have Jesus die on the cross in our place for our sins so that we might be forgiven. God, there are so many things that come from his death on the cross, and we thank you for what you have done for us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Our last section of prayer is going to be focusing on Jesus' death for us. We can't have resurrection without death. Jesus died in our place. He took the death that we deserve, took the punishment that we deserve. He died for us. He died in our place. It was a willing sacrifice. And because of his death, we can now be freed from sin. We're looking forward to Easter Sunday, but it's not here yet. So for now, let's pause and reflect on Jesus's sacrificial death for us. So a, a, a verse, Romans 5, 8, will be on the screen. We'll take a little bit of time to be silent together. Reflect on that verse, reflect on Jesus' death, and then I will close us out in prayer. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your love for us. You loved us enough to send your son to die for us, and we thank you for that. God, help us to celebrate and rejoice and delight in you this Easter season. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was great to pray together and to hear from God's word. I'd like to share with you a song. Uh, you'll find the link um, below in the, in the comments section. But Cy Knightley, one of our friends at Redeemer Croydon, has released um, a, a few new singles this week. Um, they're about Easter, they're about Jesus' death and resurrection, and in particular there's a song called Calvary Hill that I'd love for you to listen to. It's all about Jesus' death and what it means for us. So follow that link, click that link um, below, and check out his new song. I hope you have a great Friday, and I hope you um, um, are anticipating Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, where we celebrate the glorious, amazing resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. If you're looking for a church, online to join and, and to part, you know, participate in a, in a church meeting, please check us out. Our online church meeting is at 10 a.m. here uh, online. Um, have a great week. We'll see you next Friday.